Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here and welcome back to EVE Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. And I would say that the big news that came out last week is of course the dev block on the changes to the Orca, the Rorcal, mining in general. Uh, it's gonna change quite a lot and unfortunately it may just um, stop minerals from increasing in price the way I'm expecting. So some of my investments are once again at risk because of CCP's changes. Uh, still, there is a factor uh, at play as well, which is the alpha clones, which may increase demand enough to uh, make up for that. So it's uh, it's still up in the air, but of course uh, the, the crazy potential Rorcal boost uh, may be a big problem when it comes to the value of minerals. Um, as always, we'll, we're here for the market, so we will start with the Plex, that would be at 55 seconds. I'm also probably going to go at a decent pace because uh, I don't have that much time, but uh, let's, let's get started here, Plex. Um, up a little bit, sellers are at 1 billion 173 million, the buyers are at 1 billion 125 million, so they had to follow suit. Um, the buyers going up, of course, is a strong indication that Plex are here to stay. I still think that the advent of Alpha clones in November is going to give a, a final boost uh, to the Plex prices. I think that the expansion is going to trigger. Uh, a speculative bubble because alpha clones should bring in um, extra demand for plexus here however at the end you can see that we are hesitating on the five day moving average and that we are basically slowing down the increase in price um, maybe one quick note on plex as well i sold one last week when i saw sellers go for a billion 198 million i sold one for a billion 195 um, just so that i'm a bit more ready having a billion extra for the uh, blueprint originals that should be coming in November as well. Hopefully we'll get that dev block soon. Uh, but for now, Plex is still rising in price, although we're seeing the first signs of a bit of hesitation on the five day moving average. The multiple pilot training certificate is hesitating as well. You can see at the tail end that we're obviously flattening out. They are selling for just shy of 1.2 billion and the buyers are at a billion 110 million that's a pretty nice uh, margin in between these two you can also see that the volumes though are being pretty crazy um, on the increase in price we had decent volumes here now volumes going down so i actually think that the hesitation is going to translate to the plex hesitation as well and uh, we'll have to wait and see some forces uh, have probably been at play in the increase in price here as well, such as the Alliance tournament, which created some artificial demand for plexus as well. So let's hope it's just a, a temporary hesitation, but I have to be honest as well, if you bought at like 900 million and you can sell for a billion 150, a billion 170, something like that, you're making a good profit and I would not blame you for doing some sales at the moment since, well, I did one myself just to be a bit more ready. Uh, next up, we have the body resculpt that is shooting up in price as well. At some point, this one had to respond to the increased plex prices. That seems to be finally happening. Um, we can also see that the volumes are pretty low, 308 million for the sellers, 254 million for the buyers. Uh, very small market at the moment. In fact, you can see from uh, like around six months ago that we had decent volumes. Uh, a lot of this was being traded probably because of the skill injectors, skill extractors craze that was happening at the moment. People were um, creating perfect alts and of course they wanted the opportunity to also change uh, how it looked. Maybe that increased the amount for body rescope certificates, but in the end it's definitely not a crucial item in EVE Online. And throughout the summer and even up to now, the amount is obviously pretty low. For skill extractors, we should see something uh, pretty similar to Plex, and we do. We can see that we are hesitating uh, once Plex uh, skill extractors reach 270 million. So here, 5-day moving average and 20-day moving average are coming close together. So they are currently selling for 273 million. The bars are at 263 million. That's just one order though. Um, but a pretty small margin, just 10 million between these two. And again, the hesitation the slowdown of the increase in price is visible here. Uh, the, the question that you can ask yourself, of course, is this the right time to sell? 
or am I going to gamble on a search for the November expansion? That's all up to you. Um, I definitely am willing to sell depending on price of Blueprint Originals, but I'm also keeping a big chunk of Plex as a gamble for the November uh, release or just after November release. November, December tends to be a peak, I think. And uh, as a result, I, I may just uh, try to sell, let's say just before the holidays. I think that would be a good horizon. Um, because of course during the holidays uh, ccp usually comes out with black sales which may just crash the price uh, next up here we've got skill injectors after going to a bottom of 560 million uh, we recovered a little bit to 600 million but the market does not seem to be willing to be uh, to go above that um, so sellers are at 680 million but buyers stay at 594 million they want to keep the price below 600 million. Um, the biggest news here is that on an update dev block for the alpha clones, there were plans to allow alpha clones to extract skills, just not the alpha skills. Um, so this, the, the idea was basically uh, for a returning vet that has not played for years, that all of a sudden decides that maybe uh, what they would like to have is uh, some extra cash on hand so that they can play, then plex their accounts and go a different route, maybe more of a combat tune instead of an industrial tune or something like that, that they'll have the option um, to use their skills that they've trained before but can't use as an alpha clone uh, and don't plan to use in the future as a source of income, uh, perhaps for their plex or whatever it is they want to use. So this is putting more stress on the value of skill points themselves. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where the skill injectors uh, are going to end up. Uh, but I still think that alpha clones may become strong demand for skill injectors, especially since uh, they early on they get the full benefit of a skill injector. And so they may be able to fill all their alpha clones pretty quickly with these. So it's, it's again, it's a, it's a story of two sides. While the, the supply becomes easier, um, the, uh, the, the necessary investment to get uh, a farming tune going is going down, but I think that there will be decently strong supply as well. It will all depend on the numbers of uh, free to play players that remain active and uh, that will come to the game freshly uh, once uh, the November release comes out. So. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty important for the game in general, I would say. Next up, we are going to touch on some minerals. 730. Let's write that down. And uh, unfortunately, I think that uh, we will see a bit of a pullback in some of these. Luckily, Tritanium seems to be holding on decently well at the round the 6 ISK mark. So that's actually pretty decent not a great price 7 isk is a really good price 6 isk is a normal price go towards 5.5 5 isk then you are in not so good territory so if you mine tritanium and you want to sell it i think it's still okay 608 for the sellers 602 for the buyers very small margin here and when it comes to the numbers this is two days old but a billion units here we have 200 million units 100 million units 100 million units and it's still a full front page of new supply so yeah tritanium seems to be willing to stay around six isk for the time being next up we've got pyrite also um, just staying below 9.2 isk 9 to 9.2 isk seems to be the current trade range a little bit of an uptick in volumes a little bit of an uptick in price as well but keep in mind it comes from just below nine isk so um yeah very low prices at the moment i would say for pyrite 901 for the sellers nine isk for the buyers we've not seen a just zero one uh, isk uh, margin between uh, a good in quite a while because of the new taxes but uh, it here in pyrite nine isk is the current price in my opinion a little bit too low uh, the question is do you expect it the mining changes, the boost changes, the orca changes to increase supply or to decrease supply. I still think that the loss of off-grid boosts is going to, um, to decrease the ability of people to easily mine at perfect yield. Uh, they'll have to commit ships to the belts themselves. There are going to be disruptions. So I'm not entirely sure when it comes to the high minerals just yet that uh, this means a, a, a glut in supply. Uh, oh, it's not Megasite that we wanted. Spoilers, spoilers. Here is Mexalon. Um, 
tries to hold on to 66 ISK, which just like Tritanium is an okay trade range. So 67.89 for the sellers, 63 for the buyers. If you're mining for Mexalon, I think it's still okay to sell. It's not as good as 74 ISK, of course, which you could do throughout the summer. Uh, but overall, this is still a decent price. We didn't fall as low as 58 ISK, which we had done before the increase in price right here. So this is still managing to hold on to a decent price. Bit of an uptick in volumes, bit of an uptick in price here as well. Supply is pretty good. Yeah, full front page, 34 million here. Demand is pretty strong here as well. 96 million, 25 million, 300 million here a couple of days ago. So it looks like uh, Mixlon is going to be able to stay in the 66 trade range for now. Uh, next up, we've got Isogen. That was at a six month low not too long ago. Bit of an uptick here. Uh, not on that big of a volume uptick and here a bit of hesitation but staying at around 84 ISK in my opinion a very low price for Isogen. Sellers are at 86 and the buyers are at 80 ISK. Um, here for Isogen honestly I'm still in the hold on territory but I'm also considering the potential bad impact of the changes into uh, I'm not going to invest extra ISK in minerals anymore. I'm going to um, whatever I mine or make, I'm going to keep that in detail for production itself. We'll have to look for some good stuff to produce when the alpha clones come out. Um, but I'm not going to speculate more ISK into the mineral market. I did invest a decent amount in Isogen when we went as low as 80 ISK right here. So I th I think my purchases are okay. Unfortunately, it is possible that the mining changes are going to stop a lot of the potential uh, profits uh, from uh, materializing. Next up, Noxium, the in-between one. Uh, to my surprise, it's going up to 430 ISK here, just a little bit of upwards pressure. Um, why is this to my surprise? It's, it's on higher volumes, but I think my personal expectation is that Noxium could become the a uh, big loser of the changes if the raw call can have a major impact on mining volumes because Noxium is one of those side products I think that um, as you can see maybe from the one year chart can we still see it we can't really see it but before this Noxium used to be much uh, higher in price then there was a mineral rebalance in the Nosic ores we crashed down to 480 500 a bit too below 500 is let's say then we've just been meandering uh, around that price range for a little bit after that so just on continued oversupply it was just the name of the game we went as low as 400 isk and unfortunately noxium is one of those minerals that you can easily mine in null sick wormal space low sick and high sick unfortunately and considering it's coming from all those sources if there's one mineral that i actually think could go below 400 isk it would be noxium uh, because it's one of those minerals that is easily mined from all sources and that I think Nelsic groups are easily willing to sell to the market as well. So while we have a slight upswing in Noxium, my personal expectation is that this one could actually be the real loser of the mineral changes. And then next up, we've got the Nelsic minerals, with, which is Zydrine dipping to 1000 ISK. Obviously the big loser here, 1018 for the sellers, 971 for the buyers. What is happening here is, of course, that people are expecting uh, the Roar Call to be used at its maximum yield, which is going to be around five, um, five hulks worth uh, of, uh, of yield, 18,400 cubic meters uh, a minute, I think it was the number. It's, it's a crazy number. It's, it's making the Roar Call uh, in a league of its own, a mining ship in a league of its own. But I personally think that they had to do something like that for the Roar Call, give it uh, a unique thing that it becomes the best at. And uh, this this will be bad for Nulsic uh, minerals. What are you going to mine in Nulsic first for Zydra and Megaside, of course. Um, and as a result, people are expecting these prices to crash on increased supply. So this is happening right here. The, the big volume increase is probably uh, the, uh, the filling of... Uh, of a lot of orders to bring the price down so increased volume decreased price here is purely speculation because of the dev block that was triggered here um, so if you need some sidrine for production you can actually pick up some cheap sidrine at the moment mega site looks exactly the same now going down towards 1200 is here 1187 for the sellers 1131 for the buyers i bought some of this 
uh, a little bit early from this perspective uh, but keep in mind my Zydrine and my Mega Side. a little bit of my Zydrine was speculative but most of it is uh, so that I have these stocks um, and am able to use them for production in the future so this just means that I, I won't be investing ISK into high stick minerals or minerals as speculation anymore but I may pour a little bit more into cheap mega side cheap Zydrine freight that off to Dital be ready to produce some stuff with those minerals and then finally we've got more fights um, actually staying decently stable just under 10,000 ISK 9,731 for the sellers 9,362 for the buyers if you're looking for a mineral investment uh, then gamble on a tick to uh, bump uh, due to maybe a war or something like that and then more fights at 9,500 seems like a pretty good deal to me so yeah minerals um, it's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens after November when all of the changes to mining come out I'm pretty curious myself uh, but of course you need to make continuous plans after that and thus if you have a lot of minerals be ready to use those to try and find good stuff to make um, that's all part of the sandbox economy of course next up pi at uh, 1555 15 sounds good let's go over these uh, I actually am going to keep checking on these but I think that uh, it'll be long trends that we'll have to try to find so here construction blocks staying at 13,000 is probably a good price on on the high end of things uh, but slowly we can see that we're a little bit under pressure as well um, so if you can sell construction blocks probably still the right time to do so not in investment territory uh, consumer electronics we saw this dip last week and um, uh, obviously speculators big volume increase brought it back in line to 14,000 isk which I would say considering the entire chart here is pretty average so for consumer electronics it's not exactly the time to sell it's not exactly the time to buy we're right in the middle after uh, a pretty sharp dip right here next up we've got coolants uh, 13,000 isk probably the high end of the scale for coolants so probably a good idea to uh, unload my coolant planets and uh, and go sell these to the market next up we've got enriched uranium 16,000 isk i would say this is definitely at the high end of the scale um, so a good time to sell once again mechanical parts climbing back up to 10.5 thousand isk uh, 10,500 isk uh, one year chart here you know 10,500 compared to uh, what is it here 16,000 compared to 13,000 it's a little bit lower so I'd actually put this at just above the average for mechanical parts you can still sell but if you want to hold on for an opportunity 11 12,000 I wouldn't blame you uh, if you did that so yeah um, mechanical parts we can see a slight upswing here so if you can sell for 11,000 you can probably do so but uh, if you want to wait on a speculative higher price you could do that as well and next up we've got oxygen Ooh, going down quite sharply from 550 is to 450 is that's a pretty sharp move right here all of a sudden um, so this is reminiscent of consumer electronics uh, dropping quite sharply of course oxygen is uh, only a p1 so you make that straight from raw materials which is why it's in a, a different category but seeing that dip back to 450 is which i would say is the average price for oxygen is quite interesting if this has momentum then maybe a below 400 is investment is possible next up robotics slowly edging back down now below 100,000 isk uh, trying to stay very close to that maybe the one year chart is in order for this one um, I would say still above average 95,000 which is probably an okay average so you can sell at this price um, 80k something like that is obviously uh, investment worthy but uh, yeah robotics 100,000 is pretty good price rocket fuel next uh, also dropping off a little bit going below 11,500 is here sellers 11,000 first one coming in bars 10,500 so uh, you need to do a bit of work if you want to sell some rocket fuel what you probably want to do is pick these 1,000 units up and then try to release them just below 11,250 
but this is coming pretty close to an average price where maybe if this has again some momentum uh, a buy opportunity could start to show up the power cores next going up in price and uh, this was bound to happen at some point this is going to be speculation on the november release for the um, uh, engineering complexes is what they're called uh, so 3 million now for the sellers 2.7 million for the buyers luckily we've seen this coming for quite a while and we can see the big supply numbers right here i actually think that uh, producers have been positioning themselves quite nicely uh, for this change and so that the increase in price should be uh, quite a bit more limited than what we saw with the uh, citadels themselves supercomputers next holding on quite nicely at 120k here uh, this chart again is pretty weird so i think that there's something wrong with it luckily in october we should get the new charts which is going to be quite interesting and hopefully this will get fixed then superconductors next slightly going up in price towards 14,000 isk uh, 13,500 probably yeah 13,700 for the sellers 12,200 for the buyers decent margin probably above average so you can sell superconductors at these prices text cultures next 7,000 isk still pretty damn low let's get the one year chart going here yeah definitely at the low end i would say if you would if you're looking for a pi investment considering the peaks at 13,000 and 15,000 is this is like half the price uh, then uh, you want to invest some isk into test cultures it's really the only one that seems to be low enough you can see that some people are actually doing that with the increased volumes here and finally wetware mainframe wetware mainframes also slightly up in price here uh, probably due to uh, the uh, the november release again with the um the engineering structures that are coming then as you can see higher volumes increased price currently going for almost 3 million once again so yeah pretty pretty interesting stuff a lot of them if you can produce this pi stuff uh, is in very good place to sell in fact the only one that i would say you could invest in are the test cultures and uh, we're seeing the first signs of some speculation on the next round of structures coming out in november next up take one ships uh, that would be 2145 2145 so as always i'm taking a different selection every week and this week we're starting with the abaddon the uh, amar battleship that i think is from time to time used in nalsic as well unfortunately battleships are just not in the meta at the moment and we can see the typical battleship chart here starts at 210 million decently stable but at 190 million abaddons are pretty cheap decent availability there's just not a lot of demand for these next up we've got the catalyst slightly going down in price 1.2 million on its average quite a bit of volatility right here but we are stabilizing at the tail end in fact a surprisingly low amount of volatility at the end here um, so catalyst selling for 1.2 million bars at 1.1 million very good availability not much to say in the catalyst market i thought we'd see a bit more but the volatility uh, happened before the summer next up we've got the cormorant uh, the uh, destroyer class ship 1.6 million at the start 1.2 million at the end bit of pressure but overall honestly most of the last six months has been spent around 1.2 million anyways bit of a volume bump that is easily absorbed by the market if we look at the price here so availability should be good and it is demand is not very high which is why we're actually in a pretty cheap situation for the cormorant ferox next starts at 60 million ends at 54 million so again six months slight decrease in price we can also see that volatility started a little bit higher here uh, up until june after that decreased in decreased volatility and here at the end probably decent availability yeah half decent i would say just uh, pretty low demand and uh, as a result we are at decently low prices magnate next here whoa big volume increased uh volume here caused a, a bit of a bump in the price unfortunately producers overreacted and we're actually below the average of 300,000 isk uh, 380,000 isk so sellers though 408,000 buyers 351 um, and well not a lot of uh, magnates available in the number of orders 300 though 403 is quite a lot 
uh, but we are maybe set for a, a slight spike up to 400,000 here on the price chart if a lot of people actually come in and, and buy these. Uh, Magnates I think will be decently popular with um, Alpha clones personally. I think so could be worth it to actually get um, or have an, um, a blueprint ready for these. Next up we've got the Mauler. Ooh, very different chart from what we've seen uh, uh, in the tech one market so far. So we start at 12.2 million, we end at 11.8 million. Not much to say about that, but uh, the start here is actually a pretty normal tech one chart hovering at around 11.8 million on average. But here a big spike up for September on big volume increases and then uh, a decline uh, coming off of a high of 12.8 million. So volatility right after the summer uh, it, there must have been some Mahler purchases or uh, possibly some ma market manipulation considering the availability is very low and there are just not that many Mahlers on the market at the moment. So uh, actually a high situation for a ship here uh, throughout September, pretty unusual. Next up we've got the Myrmidon, the volatility is finally ending, Myrmidon used to be one that I checked every week and this crazy pattern here on increased volumes. Um, I think meant speculation uh, because I, I'm not seeing Myrmidon fleets or anything like that. And so I think that uh, whoever was doing all these purchases to try and drive the price of Myrmidons up um, artificially has finally given up and we're settling back at 54 million ISK right here. So pretty interesting. I actually think that whoever did this uh, burned themselves quite badly because the industrial response was always high enough to drive the price back down on fresh supply. And so if you've bought all these Myrmidons here, 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 uh, then, then you're stuck with those. You can only sell them once again at 54 million and you've picked up Myrmidons up to 64 million. Very bad idea in my opinion. Uh, unless these are actually fleets that are already in Nullsec, then of course the purchase makes sense. But why would you drive the price up to 70 million? Uh, I've got no idea. Next up, we've got the probe. Oh, terrible charts because of some crazy uh, ranges on the median daily prices here. So sellers are at 473,000 ISK, buyers at 430,000 ISK. Pretty decent price, I would say, for the probe. Uh, availability is huge, though, compared to the number of buy orders. Next up, the Raven. Um, Kaldari Battleship starts at 180 million. Quite a bit of uh, swings up and down between 175 and 200 million. Final spike just happened here in October from 180 to 195. Not too bad, but we are already back down. Um, so again here, a bit of a volume increase, increase in price, industry responses here, and we end up where we started 180 million for a Raven. Decent availability, not a lot of demand. It's a decent PVE ship to, though, which probably gives it uh, a bit more volume right here. Next up, we've got the Retriever, the mining barge for this week. Going down in price, I actually think that's normal because a lot of people will be switching from mining barges and exhumers to an Orca for active mining, in my opinion. Uh, the Orca makes a lot more sense. Uh, at, yeah, you'll, you'll almost want an Orca in every belt if you want to have boosts in an entire system. And so compared to the uh, easy um, off-grid boost that we had before it's gonna take a bit more doing to actually boost your entire fleet of, of miners uh, take a bit uh, different um, different habits will need to be made as well in order to get the most efficient patterns going and things like that so I think it's normal that mining barges and exhumers will be under pressure because we'll want more orcas in the belts for more boosting Next up here we've got the Scythe uh, as the final tech one ship starts at 9.5 ends at uh, just above 9 million so not much to say here except for a pretty big dip in August down to 7 million. Um, yeah, 7 million to 9.5 million would have been a pretty good purchase but overall a decently stable ship as well. Next up tech two let's take a look at these at uh, 29.30 all right I'm making good time 30 there we go. Um, so again, I'm not expecting a lot because I'm not liking the tick two market at the moment. It used to be my speculative um, 
opportunistic uh, market where I would mostly install bombers, try to make some money on the site. Uh, but uh, those days are over, unfortunately, due to the tax changes, I think. So here the Basilisk uh, settling at 210 million from 200 to 210. You can't really make a lot of money on that. 195 to 225, one spike, that was an opportunity. But uh, you can see here the decrease in volatility. Next up here we've got a broadsword slowly going down still in price to below 240 million. I again think that if you want to invest in a ship, tech 2 ship uh, for uh, possibly uh, a jump up during a war or something like that, the broadsword is still in the right territory to do so. But again, it's, uh, it's like almost a month that we've been below 240 million. Um, and uh, that that is not a good situation because that makes it look like it could actually be uh, the new normal price for the broadswords and we could actually go down from this point as well if uh, someone has the crazy idea of making a lot of them all of a sudden or something like that still if you want to gamble on a take one ship uh, then uh, the broadsword seems to be in the right place to do so Next up the Cerberus, uh, again some volatility here, probably due to Shadow of the Serpent, very unique circumstance because the Cerberus was a perfect ship to run that. Um, and then here settling at 220, going down to 200, settling at 210. You can't make uh, speculation money on this honestly. Next up the Damnation, uh, we do see a slow build up over 2 months to 400 million ISK. Probably on speculation on the boosting changes, but we're back down to 340, where again, the variations in the last month are not worthy of active trading. Next up here, the Hound, settling at 20 million. Um, so here, 20 to 18 million, that's 2 million. Uh, very difficult to make some money on that. Slight bump up again, hesitation at 19, up again going to maybe 18.4 million up to 20 million these used to be two three times uh, the size then you could make some actual money on these trades now with the increased taxes you're probably losing money on, on trying to uh, to buy like let's say close to 19 and then selling at 20 definitely not a good deal next up here the chronos uh, settling at 1.2 billion this was an opportunity again the increase in price took more than a month and of course the Kronos a Marauder is, uh, is definitely uh, much more risky considering the low volumes. Next up here the Raptor jumping from 25 to almost 28 million. It tried, it tried a 3 million jump, it tried a 10% jump here but uh, the jump off point is pretty bad. If you were looking for the actual bottom then you had a buy opportunity at 23 million but that was in uh, just before August so now you had to wait one two months uh, before you had an opportunity to sell at 27 million and that's been snuffed out already as 25 million is back on the books here. So it's it's just not the right time honestly for the tech 2 market. Too bad. Next up the Sabre here. Picture uh, the exact picture of the decreased volatility. Here are the tops going down, down, down. Here are the bottoms going up, up, up. Decreasing the volatility here from 53 million to 45 million back up to 52 million. You could do something with this. Although it's still quite a bit longer than what we usually see. But then it just keeps decreasing and we're settling at 50 million. And um, considering the amount of taxes, it's very unlikely that we'll move from this point in any substantial manner unless there's a big war. Next up the Stork, the one ship that was really proving me wrong here went from um, 60 million to 80 million, that's a, an opportunity, going back down to 60, back up to 80 again, uh, all of two big spikes in, in a month. This is the speed that we want to see though and now going back down here quite sharply um, but it is on pretty big volumes and the stork is one of the new command destroyers uh, much more recent take two ship than um, all the other ones i think that it basically means a small cartel of producers can create this effect so that makes it an extra risky gamble but at least this is one take two ship that is still a little bit alive when it comes to volatility and finally the widow just slowly again edging down to uh, 1 billion and uh, i don't think it's going to move from there on low volumes as well it's quite unfortunate but at some point i may just remove tech 2 from the check and maybe uh, turn that into like a, a popular ship segment I'm, I'm starting to play with that idea because i had a request for ishtar and for uh, rattlesnake i'm gonna take a look at the isotopes as the extra this week um, but maybe i should just replace tech 2 ships with popular ships or something like that 
uh, we'll we'll see if if it's a good idea or not. I may start implementing that at some point. Next up, the Tech Tree market, uh, thirty three fifty. That could be an interesting one, um, because I think that the the destroyers were settling at fifty million or just below that. But there was quite a bit of volatility in the cruisers. Um, so let's take a look here. Here is the Confessor slowly going down in price to 48 million after a decently stable period at 50 million. So are we in an oversupplied situation? Yes, look at that. Full front page of new Confessor, 16, 16, 10 here, 20 here, coming in here. Um, confessor under pressure a little bit, but it is a slow decrease in price. Um, so there is maybe a small buy opportunity that, that is coming in, but um, it's it's pretty slow to form on this one. Next up here, the Hecate, pretty similar here, settling at 46 million uh, since September. Are we oversupplied? Let's take a look at that. Uh, no, not really. Half a front page, 12, 12 is pretty big, but not huge. So this is doable. The Hecate seems to be settling at 46 million. Confessor coming from 50. Uh, it is normal, I guess, that you're making a few more confessors rather than Hecates. And so uh, my expectation that all of these will slowly settle at a, a price just below 50 million. I think it could come true. Next up, the Jackdaw had some volatility last week where my selling at 49 million got triggered. Now we're back down. This was because we were empty of Jackdaws and the response is here. 78, 85, 10. Not that many fresh sell orders. Uh, but uh, they are pushing the price back to 50 million already. And I suspect as the Confessor now goes below 48 million, and if the Zwipple doesn't do anything crazy, that we'll just start seeing more Jack Dolls coming in here, a settling down of the Confessor, decreasing price, and everything will slowly edge together at one price range. It's it's my personal expectation, of course. Next up here, we get the Zwipel settling at 46 million as well, so we shouldn't see too many new Zwipels coming in. A couple, 12, 16, 13, it's decent, but looking for 89 days, not that much. So I think by next week, we'll see a good chunk of Jackdaws coming in here, a bit of a settling down of the Confessor oversupply, and they will all settle at a certain trade range, I think. Um, for the cruisers, it may be a different picture. Here's the Legion going back up in price, 280 million. So you can see that some volatility is back in the cruiser market. Um, half a front page. Yeah, of new ones, 2027, 20, not that many, but selling for 185 million, not a bad price. If we look at the summer here, 140, 150, definitely a decent price at the moment. Next up, we've got the Loki staying at 165 million here. So the new supply, not a lot. It's just slowly trickling in. There seems to be more focus on an opportunity like the Legion going up. Next up, we've got the Proteus also shooting up in price to 185 million on very low availability. Um, expect a possible boost up in the Loki next week as people bring Protei to the market on this opportunity. And then finally, we've got the Tengu went up in price as well to 170 million. Pretty shy increase in price. Uh, some volumes coming in. So I think that uh, the Tengu could possibly go uh, availability is maybe a little bit high for an actual jump up but we could see decreased volumes and a slow increase in price in the tengu uh, or decreased availability and a slow increase in price for the tengu here uh, which is what the loki has been doing well slow decrease in price uh, but i think that the loki is primed for the next boost if you want to have a really risky gamble you could try to pick a couple of, of lokis up on the expectation that people will make Proti for this price, Legions for this price, Tengus maybe not, pretty much average, but uh, completely forgo the Lokis in the upcoming weeks. It's a big gamble, but it's a possibility. Um, and yeah, the expectations, the pattern that I was seeing in the last few weeks is confirming itself. The destroyers are settling down, people are not oversupplying everything anymore. Um, and as a result, they're all coming together, probably 47 million price range something like that and there is still some volatility in the cruisers as uh, some of these basically are allowed to dry up uh, which uh, i think for the loki as you can see here only one new buy uh, sell order in the last 24 hours um, if if this gets picked up uh, everything up to 170 it's not even that many of them maybe 20 loki's or something like that then you're primed for a nice jump up here 
And I guess that means that the cruiser production cannot exactly keep uh, pace with the demand from time to time. That creates some volatility. Pretty interesting stuff here and one gamble, uh, which I'm not going to take. I'm saving my ISK for the dev block and the uh, prices of the blueprint originals, but uh, it, it could be good, I think. Um, and then finally, for the extra materials, we're going to touch on the isotopes. That's going to be at 39 minutes. And uh, of course, there was some speculation uh, happening here, so which is why I check it, uh, just to show the impact of a CCP announcement on the market, because uh, these isotopes are being used in the charges for the boosters. And I'm curious to see what the effect is going to be. Here are the helium isotopes. Actually, nothing uh, too drastic to report here. Slowly settling down at 640 ISK. It's actually pretty cheap. Next up, we've got hydrogen isotopes uh no nope, i'm not well we're, we're seeing a pretty big jump up here 700 to 800 um is this when they came on cc the charges came on cc it's possible uh, let's see if we have a jump like that mm, nope nope and then settling now at 740 nothing too drastic to report here nitrogen isotopes 820 and oxygen isotopes just settling here as well i thought there was pretty big jump in something hmm did I make a mistake? We're quickly going to change this then to ice products. Let's go. Uh, manufacturing and research, materials, ice products, heavy water. There we go. This is the jump I was looking for. It's heavy water that is used in all of those charges going from 100 ISK to 220 ISK, a doubling in price on huge volumes. Um, so this is uh, the one that I was missing. Heavy waters up substantially. Then we already saw the isotopes, pretty stable market. In fact, a lot of them seems to be uh, going down quite substantially. I actually think that uh, ice mining drones uh, will uh, possibly increase the yield of ice mining a little bit. Uh, but there is, of course, a hard cap on how much ice can be mined in any given period of time uh, because of the uh, spawning mechanic of the ice belts. So maybe not uh, but yeah liquid isotope uh, ozone also under pressure at a pretty low point at the moment nitrogen isotopes decently low oxygen isotopes decently low and strontium finally at a pretty high place at 8000 isk so these are the ice products heavy water of course this is what happens when ccp announces something uh, in this case it was deploying the charges with the uh, the idea of um, the needed materials uh, added to them and of course when you see heavy water used in all of them uh, then the market reacts in uh, this way uh, these remain big gambles but uh, this is something that you can do right listen to fan fests try to follow the developers see what their plans are and then speculate on what will they probably use for uh, the upcoming features then once the announcement is hit uh, you of course have to be ready um, probably just to sell so you you had to gamble heavy water as a material for the next charges then you would have made a 100 profit in a matter of a few days or weeks pretty pretty crazy stuff and uh, seeing the impact of CCP announcements on the uh, sandbox economy of EVE Online is always pretty exciting to me because this makes and a lot of money for people. And then in the upcoming weeks, if maybe somehow someone has huge stocks of heavy water, we could see this dump back down and then a lot of people on the way down could lose a lot of ISK as well. It's always... Uh, yeah, it's it's... A major part of the game it's uh, something that i find very fascinating myself personally and it's of course part of why i make eve talk every single week uh, so yeah for this week that's going to be it thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you all next time